So, like in my last video, I figured I would continue to cover a few things that I think might be useful if, just in case things get a little dicey. In case you haven't seen my previous uh, video slash article about making technology work even if things get a little bit disrupted, I will leave a link in the uh, description and up top if you're watching on YouTube, or just a hyperlink if you're reading it in text form. Anyway, uh, this time I figured I would cover the basics of making a super simple first aid kit, um, just the kind of thing that could be slipped into a backpack or a bag or a purse or something like that. And additionally, uh, just like last time, I will again leave a link to the written version of this, just in case it's easier to uh, reference something written, as opposed to listening to me rattle off random content a bit uh, disorganized. Anyway, a quick example of the use cases of something like this, um, at least with the exception of, you know, unhealthy eating induced heart attacks. Um, it's my understanding that car accidents are by far the leading cause of preventable deaths here in the United States. With that being the case, even without all the extra things going on right now in the world, a tiny first aid kit with the right stuff might be worth toting around in a backpack. This has always been my logic for having some sort of a first aid kit type thing on me for a fairly long time. But beyond that, obviously, uh, crime rates are on the rise, there's wars, governments imploding like Sri Lanka, uh, protests in places like Iran, and of course uh, the future risks of energy shortages and unrest in Europe um, as the uh, winter starts to uh, take effect. All that kind of stuff could lead to an increased need for first aid, and it could also decrease uh, your ability to get immediate first aid for something major, and possibly even uh, decrease someone's ability to get basic medical treatment such as, you know, antibiotics or something like that, making even the basics like band-aid and antiseptics and stuff like that uh, definitely good to have on hand. In a case like that, um, having something like this might be one of the best things you can do, and of course it should be legal just about everywhere, so I figured I'd uh, just talk briefly on it. Uh, just a heads up though here, um, don't take anything I say as gospel. I got a little bit of first aid training when doing some volunteer work, and have tried to expand a little bit, reading on topics and stuff like that, but I am by no means an expert, uh, so this is very much just me rattling off things, and um, uh, just hopefully providing you with enough information to look into things yourself, and then um, figure out what to do based on that research you did. Anyway, regardless, I figured I would um, just start breaking a few things down here a bit, splitting it into two categories. Uh, just first off, with your run-of-the-mill first aid supplies, you know, the kind of stuff you'd find in like, you know, a $1 first aid kit. Uh, this is all, you know, obviously the bare bones to handle your day-to-day -day minor injuries and stuff like that. Uh, obviously the core portions of that would just be a couple of band-aids and some sort of antiseptic, you know, be it alcohol wipes, hand sanitizer, or like topical antibiotics, something like that. Obviously, if you can disinfect and cover up a cut or a blister or something like that, you're pretty much set to deal with most of your day-to-day -day stuff and prevent any of that from being a problem farther on. That said, uh, there are a few other random um, basic first aid supplies that you could also consider including. Uh, just to name off a few random things, um, things like moleskin, which is to cover up blisters and stuff like that, aspirin, uh, which can slow down a heart attack, ibuprofen or acetaminophen, you know, two basic painkillers, uh, chapstick and lotion and stuff like that, uh, caffeine pills, tweezers, butterfly bandages, and even topical lidocaine, uh, peptobismol um, slash antacid slash modium uh, for just stomach issues, uh, dental floss, and even earplugs, all just random things that could be very handy, but probably a little bit less uh, regularly used than just basic band-aids and um, antiseptics of some sort. Uh, depending on what kind of space you have and your needs and your wants, um, these could all be things that might be useful to have. Secondly, um, in my opinion, if you're going to build a basic first aid kit like this, you will also want to have some basic trauma supplies. Um, unlike band-aids, which you might use regularly, hopefully you will never need any of this stuff. But that said, if you need it, then you probably really need it. Of the two bare-bone uh, trauma-related um, things that I would definitely recommend uh, including, uh, one of them would be gauze. Uh, just a simple roll of sterile gauze that's sealed in its own individual packaging. Obviously, in addition to wrapping it around wounds or blisters, in the case of a really bad wound, you can quickly punch it up and pack it into the wound and then apply pressure. And unless the uh, wound is on an extremity, or you're going to tie off an artery, packing a wound with gauze is probably the best way to stop major bleeding or something like that, uh, aside from getting someone to a hospital. Um, you could always also use, you know, use a piece of cloth, such as a piece of a t-shirt or something like that, instead of gauze, but that's obviously not nearly as ideal as having gauze with you. And of course, uh, speaking of extremities, the second of the super minimal type of stuff that I figured I'd talk about is tourniquets. 
Obviously, beyond packing a wound and applying pressure, which I just mentioned, however, if the wound's on an extremity, uh, then tying off the entire extremity is definitely probably the most effective way to stop major bleeding. Uh, there are a ton of different options, uh, but the two ones are cat and rat tourniquets. Between the two, um, I believe cat tourniquets are generally used by all the uh, medical professionals. It's less likely to damage nerves, and it's more likely to stop the bleeding, uh, just because it covers a larger area. Whereas the rat tourniquet is uh, much smaller and easier to carry, and it's much easier to apply to yourself one handed. Now of course, instead of comparing the pros and cons, I have one of both stashed away in my backpack. But yeah, uh, there are also other options like the Israeli bandage or the SWAT T tourniquet, which would also be worth looking into if you're comparing your options. And finally, of course, you can also rig up a tourniquet by using a bandana or a piece of shirt or something like that, plus like a metal pen or a stick to tighten it. Um, but obviously that's not nearly as ideal as having a tourniquet or something like that. And finally, uh, beyond gauze and a tourniquet, uh, the trauma items that would be worth considering, there are a few different items. Uh, first off would be a CPR mask. Uh, they allow you to protect yourself from any sort of disease when trying to perform the mouth-to-mouth -mouth portion of CPR. Now, I personally don't have one to show a photo of, and that's largely because in the recent years, uh, to the best of my knowledge anyway, again, I'm not an expert, the medical community concluded that chest compressions alone will provide you with some airflow into the lungs without the risk of um, disease transmission, and if performing CPR on someone you know or something like that, then the risk of unknown diseases is a lot less. It's also probably less of a priority in a case like that. Uh, next, uh, something like Quick Clot or another clotting agent might be a useful addition to a small kit like this. These are uh, just chemical agents, uh, usually applied to gauze at a factory, which causes blood to clot up a lot faster than just applying pressure. Um, and last of the trauma additions that might be worth looking into uh, would be a pair of chest seals. These would be used in the event that somebody was shot, stabbed, or otherwise had a hole punctured in the, one of their lungs. And these effectively seal off that hole, which allows someone to breathe properly. Uh, just like a CPR mask, uh, they might be less important than something like a gauze or a tourniquet, but it might still be worth considering, uh, depending on how much uh, size you can devote to something like this, and the uh, budget that you want to put into it. Anyway, uh, I guess that sums up my super quick uh, thoughts on building a super simple portable first aid kit. Uh, for a third time, I'd like to refer to the disclaimer that I am in no way a professional, and if you're researching something, consider learning about things like CPR and stuff like that, which of course don't require any tools or anything like that. Anyway, um, I hope it helps. Stay safe, and I hope that you never need to use any of this stuff, but I guess it certainly wouldn't hurt to know.